What would you do if you looked out your window and saw a giant reptilian eye staring at you? There have been dozens of movies where characters are put into just this situation, such as Godzilla, King Kong, or even more recently, Guillermo del Toro's 2013 film, Pacific Rim. These films feature impossibly large creatures who have a tendency to wreak havoc on humankind, particularly in large cities. Likewise, anyone who's read or seen Hajime Isayama's series, Attack on Titan, may have dreamt of a titan breaking through the wall and consuming them. While many dismiss these enormous apes, reptiles, and insects as pure fantasy, some may still allow themselves to ask the question, could these giant monsters possibly exist? To answer this question, we need to first examine the world's current largest existing creature, the blue whale. Blue whales can grow as long as 30 meters, about the height of the statue Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro, and can weigh up to 180 tons, which is roughly the same as three tiger tanks stacked on top of each other. So, why are there no creatures larger than the blue whale? From a scientific perspective, whether in terms of thermoregulation or in terms of metabolic and cardiovascular function, the blue whale has reached its maximum size and would be unable to survive if it were any larger. Let's begin with the problem caused by heat emission and dissipation. Heat is generated by cells within the body, and the amount of heat generated is relative to the total number of cells, including both the internal and surface cells. However, the process of dissipation only makes use of the surface cells. Suppose we take a creature and scale it to double its original size. The number of cells used for heat emission will be cubed, whereas the number of cells used for dissipation will only be squared. Does it matter? Well, it depends on the general size of the creature we are attempting to change. For example, if we begin with a relatively small creature, such as a mouse, and double it in size, the change is slight enough to still maintain thermoregulation. However, when we attempt this on a larger scale, such as increasing a medium-sized dog to the size of a horse, the dog's fur will cause it to overheat and die if it isn't removed. This is why larger animals tend to have shorter hair. There are exceptions to this, of course. Consider the long hair of a yak. This is in fact an evolutionary adaptation as a result of the low temperatures in the frozen mountainous regions where such animals are found. Were we to transplant them to a tropical environment, they would not survive. Returning to our previous example, the blue whale, with its enormous size, we are faced with a serious problem of the volume to surface ratio in terms of dissipation. In order to stay cool enough to survive, the whale is dependent on the cold seawater to maintain its thermoregulation. If we doubled the size of the blue whale from 30 to 60 meters long, its weight would increase from 180 tons to over 1,000 tons, and the ocean would no longer be cold enough to help dissipate the heat. One of the largest known creatures to have ever lived on the land is the Mementosaurus, a large sauropod, or long-necked dinosaur, which had a length of about 22 meters, not much shorter than a blue whale, but a weight of about 20 tons, which is far lighter than the blue whale. The very shape of this creature, with its long, thin neck and tail, allowed it to regulate its temperature. Had its shape been similar to a whale, it would have overheated and died. So what other problems do these enormous creatures face? Paleontologists believe that the Mementosaurus, while primarily being terrestrial, would often spend time in the water for two reasons. The cooling effect, which aided in heat dissipation, and more importantly, using the buoyancy of the water to reduce its weight. A creature of this size and weight would have tremendous pressure put on its legs and run a severe risk of fracture. As a creature increases in size, its weight is proportional to the cube of its dimensions. However, the strength of bones and muscles are dependent on cross-sectional areas, which are only proportional to the square of its dimensions. A creature doubled in size would have eight times the weight with only four times the strength. It's for this reason that a larger animal, such as an elephant, has thicker, shorter legs which take up more space under its belly, allowing the weight to be more evenly distributed. However, when we examine a much smaller, lighter creature, such as a spider, its eight long, thin legs are more than strong enough to support it. So, back to our original question, could creatures the size of King Kong or Godzilla exist? The answer is, not on this planet. King Kong is roughly 30 meters tall, Godzilla's height ranges from 50 to 100 meters tall, depending on which particular film you watch. Due to our unique environment here on Earth, specifically in terms of temperature and gravity, a creature exceeding 20 meters in height would either overheat or be crushed to death by its own weight. 
While we can still enjoy the occasional monster movie and let ourselves imagine the impossible, we cannot forget the natural laws that govern our world. Four and a half billion years of formation and evolution have left us with a strong and stable spinning sphere. Thanks for watching this episode of Thinking Span. If you want to learn more novel and interesting facts, don't forget to click the button below and subscribe.